The next incredibly important data type is a Boolean. All a Boolean is, is either true or false. And usually we are creating Booleans with comparison operators. For example, if we are running something like five is smaller than 10, we are getting the Boolean value true. And this is incredibly useful to control the flow of our code, something we are going to talk about a lot in the next section. For example, if a condition is true, then you want to do something. And Booleans can be created in a lot of different ways. The one way we have seen already is we're using either integers or floats, and then we use comparison operators. We can also use some string methods like isNum to check if there's a number inside of a string. I think we have seen isAlpha to check if there are only letters inside of a string. Another way is we can check if there are values inside of a list, inside of tuples or a set or a dictionary. This would also work. We could also compare different sets to create Booleans. And finally, we can also create Booleans by themselves, although that's something you really aren't going to do too often. I guess let's go through this entire list and we're going to start with comparison operators. And there are quite a few. The one we have just used in the last part is the equal sign. So we are checking if two values are equal with two equal signs. And we're using two because a single equal sign is reserved to assign a data type to a variable, meaning we couldn't use it. And to check if two numbers are not equal, we have the exclamation mark equal. And that checks if two numbers are different. And finally, we have smaller or smaller equal to check if something is smaller than or smaller or equal than. And greater and greater equal would work in the same way. Those are the main comparison operators. In my code, let me start by printing. And I want to print if one is equal to one. If I run this, we are getting true. If I use a different number, let's say 10, run all of this again, I am getting false because one is different from 10. This should be quite obvious. The next operator would be exclamation mark equal. And let me add comments is not equal, whereas the double equal sign looks for is equal. If I run those two, we get false and true. False here because those two are not equal and we get true from this operation because they are indeed different. I suppose a better way of writing the comment here would be true if is equal or is not equal or besides not equal is different. We can also print if one is smaller than 10. And this one gives us the obvious result because one is indeed smaller than 10. And we could also use smaller or equal than. And this one in this case would also be true. I guess where this one matters, if we have a 10, smaller equal here is going to be true. But 10 is not going to be smaller than 10, meaning this operation would return false. This also works with greater than, Again, this would be false because 10 is not greater than 10. And those are all the major comparison operators for integers. For the next part, we could look at lists and Booleans. And in here, we can check if a value is in a list or if a value is not in a list. And this, by the way, also works with strings. An important point here is that not reverses a Boolean. If we have not false, it is going to be true. If we have not true, it is going to be false. Python here works very similar compared to what you would use in a sentence. And I am trying to be better with comments. Let's do this Booleans and numbers. I think it's a good name here. Next up, we have Booleans and lists and strings. What you could do, for example, here is you could check if one is in the list one, two, and three. If I run this, we're getting true because one is indeed in the list of one, two, and three. Let me comment out this part here so we're not getting confused. And run this again, now we are only getting true. And this is also going to work with different data types. If I, for example, had a tuple and run this again, we would have the very same outcome. If I duplicate all of this, I can also check if E is in the word hello and run this again and we will be getting true again because e is indeed in the word hello finally what you can also do 
is to use the not operator. For example, you could be checking if four is not in the list of one, two, and three. If I run this one now, we're getting true again, because four is indeed not in this list. Generally, not reverses all of these operations. I could, for example, uncomment this print 10 is greater than 10. And this one, let me keep it the only one without a comment. If I just had this one line, by default, this one is going to be false. But if I put a not in front of it and run this again, we are now getting true. Not reverses any kind of Boolean. So if you have not true, you are going to get false. You can actually do this by itself. Let me add another comment and let's call it Booleans by themselves and comment out everything else. What you could do, you could just create a Boolean by just writing true or false if you wanted to. And this one would get you true, which is its own data type. And if you write not true, you would get false. This I think is going to make sense. And I guess while we are here, we can do another data conversion exercise. So data conversion exercise. And what I want you guys to do, here are the notes. I have an E dict, and this one contains three key value pairs. It's always the integer of a number and then the word of the number as well. Although honestly, it really doesn't matter what the specific value here is. And I want you guys to do two things. Number one, check if one of these keys exists, specifically if this key one exists. Just assume you don't know what's inside of the dictionary and you want to check if this key exists in the first place. And number two, I want you guys to check if the value, not the key, the value for exists inside of the dictionary. And again, assume you don't know the actual content of the dictionary. So try to figure out these two problems. The first problem, I guess, let me put it right below, is the easier one. We want to check for a specific key. And in here, we can use the same thing we have used up here. It works in the same way. I can just check if one exists inside of the e dictionary. And let me comment out this print statement down here so we're not getting confused. If I run this now, we're getting true because we can see it right here. This one does exist inside of the dictionary as a key. If you want to be more specific about it, you could also use the method dot keys and you would get the same result. This edict.keys would now return something that looks like a list with only the keys inside of it. Although this is what you get by default anyway, so you don't really have to use it. The second part is we want to check if the value four is in the e dictionary. Although this right now is not going to work because this edict is checking for keys, not for values, which wouldn't help us all that much. To access the values, we would need the values method, the one we learned about earlier. And now we're getting something that is basically a list and it only contains all of the values of the dictionary. If I run this now, we're getting false because we know this for does not exist as a value inside of this e dictionary. Although if we had a free, this one would be true. So we know it is working. All right, with that, there's one more really important topic I want to cover, and that is the bool function. Let's talk about this one. Bool is a function that creates a Boolean data type. And this one can accept basically any kind of other data type. It's really flexible here. We could pass a number, a string, any type of container, and we would still get a value. As a matter of fact, bool accepts so many different values that there are actually different rules that determine how the values are going to be converted. And just think about the problem here. You have some really complex data set, let's say a really long word, and you pass this into the Boolean function to either get true or false. How is Python going to determine what values count as true and what values count as false. And the logic here is actually so common that Python has dedicated words for it. We have the words truthy and falsy. 
Truthy means all the values that will be converted to true and falsy is all the values that will be converted to false. The way you have to think about it is that some values will always be converted to false and those are fairly specific and anything else will always be true. And falsy values are 0 or 0, 0.0, so integers or floats that have the value 0. Any positive or negative number will become true. Any kind of empty string, so a string without any content, not even a space. Any kind of empty list, tuple, set or dictionary is also going to become false. And finally none, so the absence of a value. And literally any other value is going to become true. Meaning you don't actually have to learn that much. Now this is something we definitely want to play around with. So let's have a look at all of this in code. Let me comment out all of the stuff we have written earlier so things are not getting confusing. Right. The bool function is another function that creates a boolean data type. And I do want to print the result. We could, for example, add in a number, any kind of number, and we will get true. What Python basically does is it looks at a number and then determines if the value is truthy or falsy. If it is truthy, we get true. If it is falsy, we are getting false. And what I talked about just now is that any number besides zero will be true. This one here indeed has become true. This would also work with negative numbers. Let's say negative one is also true. The only time a number becomes false is when you have zero, this one is false, or 0, 0.0. This one is also false. As soon as you have any other value besides zero, let's say zero point, a lot of zeros and one, you are getting true again. But if you have any floating point with just zeros, it is going to be false. And this was the first rule. Besides that, for strings, if you have any kind of word, even if it's just a space, it is going to be true. However, if you have an empty string, this one is going to be false. Finally, if you have an empty list, this one is also going to be false. But if you have any kind of value inside, it is going to be true. The way you want to think about it is that if any kind of data type has an actual value, then it is going to be converted to true. If it doesn't have any content, it is going to be false. There's one more data type we haven't really covered yet in detail, and that is the absence of a value, so none. And this by itself is also data type in Python. And this one obviously is also going to become false. I think this one makes sense. We are actually going to talk about this in just a second in a bit more detail, but it's not something you have to worry about too much. But well, with that, we have Boolean data types. That's kind of all you need to know. And in the next section, we are going to use this a lot more.